Now we would like to have a better understanding of what goes on inside the differential amplifier. So let us develop intuitive analysis of the behavior of the differential amplifier. So we are still at the intuitive level. We are not developing any mathematical equations yet. We just wanted to understand intuitively how is this particular amplifier worked. So the question is, how does the differential amplifier work? The idea here is, how would it amplify the signals? Let us just look at it intuitively. Let's see how does it work. So here is the first case. What happens if V1 and V2 are equal? If V1 and V2 are equal, the source of M1 and M2 is the same then VGS1 and VGS2 are the same, which leads to I1 equals to I2, which leads to V out 1 equals to V out 2, then the differential output V out is 0. You see? So this is a very important remark. Look at it again. Let's look at it again and let's look at it quick. If V1 equals to V2, then VGS1 is the same as VGS2. Then the current through M1 is equal to the current through M2. Then the same output voltages at both transistors are equal. V out 1 equals to V out 2. Then the differential output is 0. So if the differential input is 0, if V1 equals to V2, then V out equals to V2, and the differential voltage is equal. Here is the second condition. What happens if V1 is greater than V2? So now we're saying that the voltage for the input 1 is bigger than the voltage for input 2. What happens? then VGS1 is bigger than VGS2. That means ID1, which is the current through M1, is bigger than the current through M2. You see that? That means the voltage V out 1 is less than the voltage at V out 2. The question is why? You see, watch the trick. If V1 is bigger than V2, then V out 1 is smaller than V out 2. Why is that? Because if the current through M1 is bigger than the current through M2, there will be more voltage drop across the resistor of M1 than the voltage drop across the resistor of M2. You see, the voltage drop across the resistor of M1 is bigger than the voltage drop of the resistor at M2. That means VO1 is less than VO2. See, and that's very interesting. That means V out is positive the way we defined it, because we defined V out to be V out 2 minus V out 1. Now here is another case. What if V1 is much much bigger than V2. Under this condition we can say that ID1 will be much much bigger than ID2. That we can say that ID1 approximately will equal to the bias and current ISS. Or we can say that the current through M2 is basically zero. Right, because VGS1 is much, much bigger than VGS2, then the current through I1 is so large that it takes all of the bias and current ISS. Under this condition, V out 2 will be VDD, and V out 1 will be roughly 0. And you have to make sure that all transistors are saturated. If the transistors are not saturated, this will not work. The output signal will be distorted. So that's a requirement that you carry with you 
all the way through when you design amplifiers and CMOS technology. Transistors have to be in the saturation region. There is another important note, and this important note is about this transistor, the Biosyn transistor M3. Note that the drain of M3, which is D3, is the same as the source of M1 and M2. That means VD3 equals to VS2 will equal to VS1, but we also know that M3 must always be saturated, right? Because if it's not saturated, the circuit will not work as nice. And it will have other problems that we will discuss later. The question now, what is the effect of the V common mode on M3 in the circuit? Well, here is the trick. Since VGS1 and VGS2 are greater than the threshold voltage for that transistor, that's for both transistors to be conducting. Remember, VGS must be greater than V threshold voltage. Otherwise, we don't have enough voltage to conduct, right? So, both transistors have to be greater than the threshold voltage to be conducting. And VDS must be greater than zero to be conducting. Then V common mode at the input must be greater than the threshold voltage in this particular circuit. So there is a strict requirement in what's the minimum input voltage at the input stage of the differential amplifier. Here is another question. What if the source of M3 is connected to another voltage like VSS? So remember that when we use op amps, we say that the power supply of the op amp can be VDD and minus VEE, right? So it can be plus 15 and minus 15. So that source will be at the bottom of M3, at the source of M3, right? The negative voltage, the negative bias and voltage will be at the bottom of M3. So under this condition, we know that V common mode has to be greater than V threshold voltage plus VSS for both transistors to be on. And also, we know that V common mode has to be less than VD plus the threshold voltage at all times for both transistors to be in the saturation region. So in summary, what I'm telling you here is the common mode input voltage is bounded from the top and from the bottom. So the transistor remains conducting and in the saturation region at all times. You see, and that is very important. The common mode input voltage to the differential amplifier is very important. How high can we go must be limited so that both transistors are in the saturation region and how low can we go must be limited so that the bias and current through the circuit is not affected as much.